Well, good morning, everybody. It's been a slightly snowy morning for some of us, but I guess we're still a lot luckier than a number of others. And it's just so good to see all your faces and to be together to worship this morning. And I haven't got any notices that aren't on the Pew's news. Hardly surprising, is it? Um, but um, before we begin, um, Ian's going to play us just a couple of minutes of reflective music um, before we begin our worship. Thanks, Ian. And I hope that's put us just in the mood to begin our worship. So Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit. So let's walk with him in his light, safe in the knowledge that we can each say, I am his and he is mine. And Father, though we cannot be together in person, still we gather to offer you praise and thanksgiving, to hear your holy word, to lift our prayers to you, and to seek forgiveness for our wrongdoing. Despite the trials of our time, help us find space and quiet to listen for your voice and to know in our hearts that whatever may befall us, we live in Christ and he in us. Amen. In all our travelling, may your footsteps guide us. Within our homes and families, may your footsteps guide us. In difficult situations and conflict, may your footsteps guide us. As we stumble on the way, may your footsteps guide us. In the travelling of our faith, may your footsteps guide us. As we place our trust in you, may your footsteps guide us. In all our travelling, Lord, may it be in your footsteps in which we place our feet. And so now we'll turn to our first hymn, My Jesus, My Saviour. Thank you. 
The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. And so let us confess our sins. Father, you have given us a world of beauty. And we have spoilt it a world to feed us, and so many go hungry. A world of riches, and we are unwilling to share. A world to care for, and we think only of ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, for those times your heart is saddened by our selfishness. For those times we have no thought for others, no cares but ours. Enable us to see this world anew as a gift from you. To be shared and nurtured and those who live upon it and to be loved and cared for. We ask this that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of our lives. Amen. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the third Sunday of Epiphany. God of all mercy, your Son proclaimed good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now perhaps everybody can join in though muted in Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. He who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth for evermore. My help comes from the Lord. 
And so now we'll have our second hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. The reading is taken from the Gospel of St John, chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory 
and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning we've heard again the familiar story of the wedding at Cana. As we know, this story is full to overflowing with theological meaning, and each of us no doubt has a favourite aspect. For me, a little gem in the midst of this great story is the interaction between Jesus and his mother. It reminds me that although Mary was visited by an angel and gave birth to her beautiful son while still a virgin, she was still a human mother. And her experience of motherhood for the first time is shared by mothers everywhere. So many firsts, a first smile, a first tooth, a first word, those very first steps, all miraculous in the eyes of every parent. And yes, I am aware that in today's world, those privilege ma privileges may just as well be given to a father, a grandparent, or even a nursery nurse. My generation is showing. But when I speak of Mary as a mother, I'm not intending to take anything away from dads. The Gospels tell us nothing about Jesus' growing up. We don't know with absolute certainty whether he had brothers and sisters or anything about the influence of Joseph in his life. Did his father live long enough, his father Joseph, live long enough to teach him carpentry? Perhaps. Was he the one who taught him his intimate knowledge of the scriptures? We're not told. How old was Jesus when he left home? Did he, as many think, leave to follow his cousin John as his disciple? There are just so many questions. But Mary would have seen the early days of his education and watched as he grew and developed. She must have wondered what the future held for him and when it would come to light that he was a very special child indeed. Luke tells us that she didn't have long to wait for early signs. Mary and Joseph took the baby to be presented at the temple according to custom and Simeon and Anna recognised the baby Jesus at once. Simeon had been waiting all his long life to see this child, the saviour of Israel, and he was overjoyed. Let's just recall some of his words as he praised God for Jesus. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Well, that was certainly a first. It had never happened before and never will again. But Simeon said something else too. He told Mary that a scripture said the Messiah would be pierced, so a sword would pierce her own soul. And again, as a human mother, she was to share with many others in the years to come the horror of the loss of a beloved child. That he was sacrificed to reconcile humanity to God was probably not at the forefront of her mind as she watched him die. Now, in the context of a family wedding, Mary was to witness her son's first miracle as the wine for the celebrations was about to run out, a matter of great shame to the entire family. Her reaction to this disaster is probably quite familiar to many of us. Jesus, don't just sit there, do something. Perhaps she was thinking he might pop down to the equivalent of day's supermarket and buy up the whole wine stock. Jesus's response might also be familiar to some of us. For goodness sake, mother, what do you expect me to do about it? Incidentally, there was nothing disrespectful about the use of woman for his mother. It was normal. Well, I just love this. It's my favorite bit of the story. And it reminds me that Jesus and his mother were both fully human, though he was of course also God. 
But despite his saying, my time has not yet come, in fact, it was now beginning as Jesus knew it must. He knew what was being asked of him. And yet he hoped he had more time yet. He was a young man and did not really perhaps feel ready yet. Does it not bring to mind Gethsemane and Jesus bending to his father's will, despite hoping that he had just a little more time yet? In the same way, he now stepped up and responded to his mother's wishes and his father's will. We are, of course, familiar with the theology. The symbolism of wine poured out freely as Jesus' blood would later be poured out freely for us. But I see a young man facing up for perhaps the first time to his destiny. And he got to please his mother at the same time. A theme's been running through my head all week, and I hope it's reflected in our worship this morning. That it's just that Jesus is mine. Don't ask me why it's there. I guess the spirit put it there in a time of need, as he does. I suppose Mary could, for a while, say with truth, Jesus is mine. But as in all families, our children are only lent to us for a while, and then we have to let them go. But Jesus is mine, ours, and for each of us, forever. He listens to us in a way that a phone call from a tired son or daughter after a day's work never could. Having listened, he speaks to our hearts. He will walk hand in hand with each of us, never tiring, never too busy. When we think of Jesus, we often think that we are his, the body of Christ, as St. Paul explains in his first letter to the Corinthians. And so we are, but he is also ours, our brother, friend, saviour. So this morning, let us be truly thankful for this and say to ourselves, each of us, Jesus is mine. Amen. We thank you for our world. The heavens tell of your glory. For our land, its beauty and its resources. For the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who have too much and are trapped in their fear of giving. We pray for those who have too little and feel hunger and disregard. Jesus, you are mine. 
and I am yours. Live in us so we can see through your eyes. You long for all your children to rejoice in your creation and to share in its bounty. We pray for all those who through their own or others' actions are deprived of fullness of life. Dear Lord, give us your hands to reach out to the prisoners, the handicapped and all who are sick. For everyone in hospital at the moment, lying in fear and pain. And we pray for those in politics, medical science, social and relief work. For all who seek to bring life and healing to others. And we pray for your church, for all who lead us and for all who pray with us and for all who do the practical tasks, often unseen but content to serve you. May the mind of Christ be ours to see the truth and his heart to bring love to all. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice and a willingness to give of ourselves in the spirit of Christ. You are mine, dear Lord, and I am yours. Look at our hands, see the touch and the tenderness, God's own for the world. Look at our feet, see the path and the direction, God's own for the world. Look at our heart, see the fire and the love, God's own for the world. Look at the cross, see God's son and our saviour, God's own for the world. This is God's world and we will serve God in it. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to have our wonderful final hymn, In Christ Alone.
after that wonderful rousing hymn, Kate will give us our blessing. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform each of our lives and make our hearts glad with the knowledge of his love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with each one of us today and every day. Amen. And so let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So let's go, although not very far, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Really Thank enjoy you. it.